Welcome to the shooting show. This week, Jeff Garrard does his bit to ensure the future of the sport by taking out a youngster at the Pigeons. Plus, Scott McKenzie gives us the lowdown on Fox Calls. back out at the Pigeons with Jeff Garrett, but today is a little different. Jeff's got a young shooting guest. Right, um, right. well obviously we're pigeon shooting today. I've got young Charlie here, um, and uh, what the reason Charlie's here is because Charlie and his father and another parent and son entered a clay shooting competition, which was in, uh, in aid of raising funds for Huntington Rugby Club because they want to build a, and have their own ground. Um, and they won the father-son team award, which for their sins, it was a day coming out with me. Um, so here we are today, we're pigeon shooting. We're on was probably the last of the pigeons on rape and um, got a nice bright sunny day. The wind as we're standing is blowing along the hedge here, coming down this way here. So we're going to set the pattern out in front of us here. Just do, might just break off the odd little um, green bell and just thread it in the hide just to break it up. It, it's good that youngsters are coming into the sport, and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm always keen to help youngsters come into the sport and show them the ropes because we need them. They're our future to keep the sport going. So hopefully uh, today we can uh, show Charlie a few tips on how to set the pattern up, build a decent hide, and hopefully shoot a few pigeons. I do really enjoy my sport, so like football and rugby and obviously this, this is, I, I really enjoy this. I'm not really an indoorsy type of person, I like getting out. I've been doing it with Dad for a long time and yeah, he's, he's got me into it and I, I wouldn't look back on it. I think it's a great way to spend the time I've got, it's great. When I was younger, I just went with Dad picking up at the local shoots, but now I've got my own gun of browning. Right. You got what cartridge you got there, mate? That's twenty-four. Uh, you got some, got some Eli VIPs, right? Okay. We'll stick them ones down there to start with we'll, on that packet. Eh? Dad tries to teach me a lot, but yeah, he, he'll say I don't really listen. But <laughs> I haven't really had much like teaching or anything like that. So I'll have these on. You've got your ear defenders, yep. which is a must, especially for someone of your age. Um, I'm a little bit too late in the, uh, in the day now, but ear defenders is a must, you know. I really started with a small air rifle, which we just shoot the odd pigeon with in the garden. And then I moved on to my dad's old 410, which we would go out every Saturday, Saturday with and try and see if there's anything about. And then a couple of years ago, I moved on to my Browning medalist. Because when I've been watching them, they'll come over the top of us and hopefully they'll swing in once now we're set up or they'll come along this hedge on the side here. But it's just a case of just waiting now. He's coming back, look, see him? Get yourself up, get yourself up. Go on, when you're ready, go on in. Ooh. I've hit him. You hit him hard with the first barrel. Yep, it just dropped in the edge of the field there. Right, that's open the account. Well done. But what you want to do though, when you when you get up, it's all it's what I try and tell everyone really, is it's don't rush things. Don't don't jump up, come up steady. You know, so as you come up steady, because what happened in, as you jumped up, the pigeons see you at the same time and that was whoosh, that was off. So you done well to hit it, but you need to get up gently so that doesn't see you, it doesn't notice you. A quick movement in the hide, well, they'll see that straight away, but a gentle movement, they won't, you know, so. And it is down, definitely down, just up the hedge, oh, we'll, we'll pick that up at the end of the day. Okay. Uh, so it's a good start, first one, and uh, what I liked about that, that pigeon, is it, there's three or four more coming up this hedge here, right here now. 
See him? Yeah. Up his head, see him. What I liked about that pigeon is it went out over the decoys, then it went right out in the field, turned round and come yeah. back in again. So again, it was a nice side. See? Charlie's off to a good start and he's keen to prove his first shots weren't a fluke, quickly getting another pigeon on the ground. Shot. He's making the oh, case well that edge isn't well everything. Done. Thank you. We've got two now, we'll go and put them up, get the pattern sorted out and build that pattern up. All right, so just lean your gun up the front there. Don't worry about that. Don't worry about a bit of blood, mate, you'll get... That's all right, just... Right. Twist his head. Put it like that. We'll stick it out there, about 15 yards in front of that one there. Meanwhile, Jeff has warmed to his role as a coach. He's enjoying himself to the full, and he hasn't even taken a single shot. But old habits die hard. Another bird comes in, and Jeff just can't resist having a go himself. Right. When you're ready. Shot, well done. Whoa. Didn't see the second one. Well done on the first one. Jeez. Nice one. That would have been a superb right and left if you got the second. I didn't see the yeah. second one. Obviously, you must have just second come into one, view. Yeah, just come yeah the lovely. Well done. They come nice because they come across the field and we're sort of drifting up on that line there where we've, there's been a few there, and all of a sudden they just see the pattern and just swept in quite nicely then. Here, come on, Charlie, from the left, from the left, see him? See him? Just take him steady, take the one to the right, in, in, in front of him, here, here. Whoa. We're really getting into the swing of things now, with Jeff in on the action too. The chances are coming thick and fast. Luckily, yeah, Jeff's right, gracious enough to leave a few steady, shots steady. for young Charlie. Well done, well done. When you, when you get up like that, you've got, you've got more time than what you think, because the first yeah. shot, you was about that much over yeah, the top of it. So you've got plenty of time to just, just get up. Just gently going up now. Steady, steady, steady. Well done, well done. Oh, how did that not come down? I suppose you've got that full chat, didn't you? <laughs> that was a nice one now. I tell you what, that was a, the perfect shot because when you got up, instead of getting up and going bang, your first shot, you got up and you give yourself a little bit of time to get on it yeah. and, and you killed it really nicely right out in front of the high there. Perfect yeah. it was. Little sod. Oh, there's another one there. Look. Yeah, yeah, this one here. It's in the takes, in the takes. You actually hit that your second barrel. Mm probably would have come down in the hedge, but um, just to make sure, there's another one there. What's he doing? Look. Just take him nice and steady, look. Nice and steady. Oh. Up there, look. Just up there, what's he gonna do? He's mm, just... yeah, yeah, in the digs, 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 see? Well done, perfect. In the digs, see? In the digs, in the digs, in the digs. Mm, just a bit behind that second shot. Yeah. In front, in, 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 there, 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 go on. Well done, good shot. Oh, yeah, all yours. Look, take nice and steady. Look, nice and steady. Let it twist around. It. Well done. Good shot. Good shot. Go on, go on, go on. Charlie might only be 13, but he clearly knows his stuff. We reckon he'll be a name to watch in the future. Before we know it, the day draws to a close. Right, that's another day done. Just picked up 28. Um, again, it's not been the easiest of days today, but 
Charlie here, shot well, ain't you mate? It seems to kill some good ones today. Yes, thanks. And uh, you know, we've, we've had them decoying in, but then it's been one of those days where you'll get a little session where they, everything comes by, decoys in lovely, and then the next half an hour they just go by as if we're not here. Uh, we've changed the pattern around a couple of times, which made a bit of difference. Um, but I think for the day where we've been, and the, and the lack of pigeons that we've got in the area, I think to, to get what we did today, we've, we've had a good day. The first couple that came in, I thought I got them quite nicely as they, they came in well to the pattern. But yeah, as they went, started coming in thicker, and then I started to drop off a little bit, but then I got back on it as it near the end. Yeah, you shot all right today. I mean, you know, you've had, had your little little times where you've missed a few, but, but we all miss pigeons, mate, because, yeah. because that's the nature of the bird. You know, but I've seen you kill some really good ones today. And, I mean, I've missed them. You've missed them. Yeah. That's just the way it is. They haven't decoyed as good as we'd liked, um, but for what they have done, you know, you've shot yourself well today. Don't do yourself, you know, down, mate. You've shot some good birds today. Thank you. You know, so been been real good to see. Good you've had a good day. Yes, thank you. Yeah. Excellent. All right, then, mate. Well, thank you very yeah. much, Jeff. No worries, Really mate. appreciate it. Thank you, Jeff. I'm well shot, mate. I'll, I'll, bet, he's learned, I'll bet he's learned a lot <laughs> as well. He's learned out of this one, too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jeff and young Charlie there making it work at the pigeons. And now, the shooting show news. This is the shooting show news. With the glorious 12th just a day away, Basque has reminded the public of the benefits of grouse shooting to the environment and the economy. Nearly a million hectares of upland Britain are managed for grouse shooting, providing more than 300 full-time conservation jobs. Grouse shooting maintains land of international conservation importance. Basque's Alistair Mitchell said those who shoot or eat grouse can be confident they have contributed to the economic, environmental and social life of the uplands. Keep track of the grouse season in Modern Gamekeeping magazine. Royal Berkshire Shooting School hosted its first ever CPSA registered 100 sporting clay shooting competition last week. In a unique move, the competition took place over three days during the week, on Monday to Wednesday. To celebrate the inaugural competition, the school unveiled the annual Challenge Trophy. Chris Childerhouse, Wayne Martin and Adrian Johnson were tied on 89 after the first two days, but Brett Hand shot on Wednesday and eclipsed their score with 92. Very good course, uh, very technical course, uh, a lot of speeds and angles, um, nothing particularly too far out, so everything was there to be shot. Um, very enjoyable day, glad it didn't rain. Yeah, so definitely. Very, very pleased with that. For full scores, visit rbss.co.uk and keep up with all your competition news in Clay Shooting Magazine. Thermal rifle scopes are taking off in the UK, with a new model bringing the new technology below the £4,000 mark. The Pulsar Apex HD 38S thermal scope is available from Scott Country and promises detection of human sized targets all the way out to 920 metres. More than enough for foxing purposes. Scott Country's Paul Stewart showed us what it was capable of. It has a detection range of up to 950 metres, switchable between black hot and white hot, and there's nothing on the planet that will come close to detection in this. Air gunners, centre fire users, it's the business. And finally, Birds of prey are at their highest ever population levels, says a new report from the Countryside Alliance. Legal protection, the prohibition of pesticides, reintroduction schemes and changes in attitude have led to what the Alliance calls a real success story. Only the kestrel has declined in population since 1970, and only two species remain on the red list of conservation concern. The Alliance said that active management had played a key role in the reintroduction of species. That was the Shooting Show News. Scott, you're well known as a man who's into calling foxes. Just describe to me what the difference is between um, calling in America and calling in the UK and the calls that are used. Well, it's, it's to do with obviously the species that we have uh, of animal to call here. And when you're talking about predators, it's really only sort of foxes. Uh, you know, that's the, the first thing that uh, sort of springs to mind. So yeah, it, really the, the sort of calls that I make Four foxes are um, you know, distress calls, mm -hmm. you know that you can vary in pitch uh, to however you want. Uh, and but in America, you can get uh, hand calls for vocalizations for calling coyotes, howlers, uh, squeakers, distress calls. Uh, so yeah, it's a bit more varied out there. 
but um, obviously because of the, the species that they got. But uh, yeah, it's the, the process is more or less the same. But the, in the UK, we're, we're a bit behind America in terms of calling. It's a lot of generic calls that we have here. Uh, so mm -hmm. the making of custom calls is quite a new thing in the UK. Yeah, I'm, as far as I'm aware, I'm, I'm the only sort of one that makes custom calls. There may be a few lads out there that do it for sort of uh, in the spare time and things. Um, but yeah, most of the calls that we sort of you can get here, uh, like you say, pretty generic, um, standard sort of uh, shapes. Whether it's a disc, you know, or the sort of Aussie Tenterfield style sort of call. Mm -hmm. um, you know, all similar sorts of sounds really so uh, yeah when we start talking in terms of custom calls um, there's there's not an awful lot out there which causes problems for, for myself because most of the reeds and sleeves and things like that I need I have to ship over from America. Mm -hmm. uh, what's the benefit of having having a custom call? Okay it looks great but what are the practical benefits mm -hmm. in the field? Well for certainly for the reeds that I used when I make my calls these reeds are, are tunable so you you can with a bit of knowledge and know-how and a bit of practice, you can sort of tune the reed to how you want it, whether you want it high pitch, low raspy, make it into a rabbit distress call or a hair distress call. Um, yeah, they, 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 there's a bit of play there. Mm -hmm. And in terms of being able to actually call foxes in, I suppose that also gives you a variety. So you might be able to call in something that's used to hearing mm -hmm. you know, an off-the-shelf call and probably had a shot between its ears before. Well, that's it. I mean, it's you certainly again with the reeds that I use and the style of uh, call that I make. It means you can play these calls a bit better. You can sort of vary things about you. You know, it uh, you can get good good notes out of them. It's just like any other musical instrument, really. It, uh, if it's got a reed, it, you need to learn how to play it to get the best out of it. Mm -hmm. And what is the the rough process? The very, give us a, a couple of basic steps. For you to put a call together and then we'll, we'll have a look at how you do it so basically once you've got your reeds in the sleeve uh you, you've got to select the piece of wood or woods that you want to use mm -hmm. and really the woods um i find as, as long as you're using a, a, a relatively good hard wood that'll stand you in good stead for for the call so yeah you know there's you can have uh different uh woods put together glued together to make fancy shapes fancy patterns within the wood just one piece of solid wood. So once I've selected that, then I'll, I'll drill it, drill the bellow end out, and then I'll just start to turn it to the shape, you know, the desired shape on the lathe that I want, and then sort of work it from there. And, and then, and because it's a custom call, that shape could change as time goes on as I'm making it. Uh, so no two calls are the same, really. Um, once you've got the shape, you, uh, and you fit the reed, have a play on it, make sure it sounds good. And then the final stage is sort of uh, you know, oiling the call, waxing it and sealing it then so it, uh, you know, it's, it's ready to go out in the field. So we've sort of got the, the startings of the, of the bellow shape and this then will give me the, the hole that I need to hold it onto the lathe ready to Chisel out the shape. Scott, how much of the shaping process affects the, the sound of the call? Um, it's not so much for the sound of the call because that's all to do with the drilling out of the bell or whether you sort of go deep with the bell to create a bigger, wider mouth. Uh, the reason I shape mine like this is because it's ease of the hand. It helps you then when you're playing the call to be able to manipulate the sound coming out from the bell with your hand, so it's there, you can feel it and you can work it properly there. The sound of the call is the internal. Yeah, it's, it's the, the sounds that you get will come from the reed, the bellow, how hard and softly you blow it, and the action with the hand. So again, like I said before, like any musical instrument, you've got to practice, learn how to play it to get those tunes that you want. Well, now it's just to finish off the drilling out of the uh, mouthpiece and the barrel there, and then, uh, have a look at it, see how it feels in the hand, see how it performs, and then it's then if there's any sort of final sanding where there's you know, sometimes parts of the grain of the wood is a bit uh, porous, so we'll just take that down a bit more. Uh, but once we're happy with that shape and it's been drilled out a bit more at both ends, then it's uh, onto oil in it and finishing it. The oil really brings out the colour and the markings in the wood.
the wax helps uh, fill in any little voids in the grain, any little pits that you can't sand out. So what's this last part that you're doing now, Scott? So well, this is where, yeah, we're, 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 we want to put the reed into the cool now, so then we need to find now where we want to place the sleeve. Uh, you can have the, the reed part way in the sleeve, fully inserted into the sleeve. We just see what works best. Yeah, and uh, the beauty of that is, if you do lose the reed, damage the reed for any reason, you can just pop that out, order a new reed from myself, I'll send you that in, and you can insert it, and it's uh, you're back out and away again, so you're not losing your whole call. Well that's it for this week, thanks for watching. Please don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. This has been The Shooting Show. Sure.